What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and we're back with another episode of Poker Hands, and this time we're going deep into the heart of Hero Calls. I actually remember seeing the following hand several years ago and thinking to myself, what is going on? I actually had no idea. Three years later, I still don't have that much of an idea, but I can tell you what players should or shouldn't have done, talk about the kinds of hands they should use, and highlight some of the errors that both players end up making here. That said, great hand, happy it happened. Let's jump right into the action. Rough and limps with king three of clubs. And Pete raises with nine deuce of clubs. And Ruffin calls. Our hand begins with Phil Ruffin limping into the pot from the low jack with king three of clubs. Now we all know you shouldn't be doing that. We should raise into the pot with a mix of holdings to take down the blinds and antes. That said, let's just not beat this to death. This is clearly a mistake. The hijack folds and now David Pete raises in the cutoff with nine two of clubs. Okay, another mistake made in this hand. But let's talk about this because there's a few interesting factors that make me like his raise a little bit more. Um, and then there's obviously the most important factor, which is his hand is too shitty to even take advantage of those factors. Two of the three players behind him are tight players. You have Doyle Brents on the button, who I would describe as a little bit too tight into the pot, but definitely capable of making some moves. I've seen some hands of Doyle where he definitely goes for the pot, but he's not going to be playing his button nearly as much as a player probably should be. And then you have Barry Greenside, the big blind, probably one of the most tight players that's ever played in any of these TV shows. Now, I'm not saying he's the tightest, but he's certainly up there. So these factors, when I'm in the cutoff and I'm facing a limp from a player that's probably playing too many hands, make me want to raise wider. Maybe I would normally raise all my pairs, suited broadways, suited aces, and a few hands like ace nine or king jack or some offsuit broadways, right? But now I might want to throw in a couple one gap suited hands and maybe some suited kings. That does not mean it's time to go to town here with 9-2 of, of clubs. And additionally, one thing that might detract from raising a little bit wider is Vanessa Selps is in the small blind, and she's certainly an aggressive player, particularly out of the blind. So I think Pete saw an opportunity here to try and isolate a player that's definitely weak, definitely a weaker player, but does not have respect for the fact there are still three players behind him, and his hand is also quite bad. I mean, at least it's suited, I guess, right? But it's... It can be dominated by higher suited hands. And additionally, what kind of pairs are you going to make with 9-2 as well as straight draws that you're going to be happy with? You know, you're really hoping to make moves post-flop. And if you want to make some move, moves post-flop, that's fine. But use a hand like 5-4 suited or 6-5 suited or something like that. Anyway, Ruffin decides to limp call. And so uh, I'm going to be talking about Ruffin's strategy here. Uh, kind of making some assumptions about the kinds of hands he's going to have. I know I don't limp call. I know that, you know, good players don't do this, but I'm still going to try and pretend to kind of create a strategy based around limp calling, and we're going to use that in our flop analysis. So let's see what the flop is. Nope. 5,000. Just a pair of kings for Ruffin. And Ripper beats him into the pot with his monster. The flop comes ace, king, eight, rainbow. And now Phil Ruffin decides to lead, which I obviously don't like. Let's think about the kinds of hands that hit this flop. Ace, king, aces, kings, eights, ace, eight suited, king, eight suited. You know, maybe Ruffin has a hand like ace, eight or king, eight suited, but he's not going to have those really premium hands. Those hands are going to be open raising into the pot. However, even though Pete's going to have a lot of crazy wild shenanigan bluffs, apparently way too many of them, he still will have these strong holdings. Now, when one player has a lot of very strong holdings or a lot of very weak holdings, a good idea is to check to them. Because if you have a middling hand, like let's say a king, you want him to either check back or you want him to try and bluff with some weak hands so you can catch that bluff. You don't want to bet because now you're forcing him to fold a lot of weak holdings. However, this bet works out perfectly because now Pete decides to put in a float here with the nine high. When someone bets in the in a pot, even if it's only half pot or less, or a little bit more than half pot, I guess it, is what it is here. You need to keep one thing in mind. 
you can always fold your worst hands against a reasonable sized bet. If they min bet, maybe you can't fold anything. But when we're facing, you know, a reasonably normal sized bet, you always want to fold your bottom third of hands, okay? And it changed on the board, changed in the spot. I don't want to get too deep into that. But you cannot float everything or raise everything or just play all your hands versus a lead because then they can actually exploit you by only leading with good hands. If Ruffin decides he's going to lead his strong hands here and he's going to get paid by actually every holding, and by the way, if you're going to float 9-2 of backdoor, the backdoor, sorry, no backdoor flush draw here, can you even think of a worse hand? I can't even think of a worse hand to float. Like, I'd have to get creative. Like, 7-2 of clubs. But that's like the same. I mean, there's almost no hands are even worse to float in this hand. So, clear fold and never feel compelled to bet to kind of protect your honor that you raised pretty and you can have aces. You can. And you should make some moves here. And I like a mixed strategy of moves here on the flop. Fold your weakest third of hands. Raise with some strong hands like ace-king. Ace is king's eights. Ace-eight. King-eight suited, probably. Maybe king-eight off if you're raising this wide. You can raise with those hands. Raise with ace-queen. Raise with ace-jack. Ace, raise with ace-ten. Those hands are very likely to be good because Ruffin's not really going to be able to beat those hands from preflop. And then you can mix in some nice bluffs. You can mix in uh, diamond hands. A hand like nine-seven of spades. A hand like jack-ten. You know, you can mix in those hands. Queen-jack, queen-ten could be reasonable hands as well. And then you're also going to put some hands into your call range. You know, some aces, so you can have top pair. Uh, I would say all of your kings, all of your 8x hands, some, some pairs like jacks that are in a bit, little bit of a difficult situation. And then also float some of those queen jack, uh, queen 10, jack 10 type hands as calls. So don't raise all of them. You want to call some too, so you can bluff on later streets. So you have like a pretty balanced approach here. Fold your worst hands, mainly call, raise some strong hands, and if you select backdoor or, you know, backdoor draw type bluffs and we're trying to take down the pot. So, so at this point, they're both playing poker, but I'm still going to do some analysis. I, I always find this funny when we do this in poker hands. When we talk about a spot and someone says, you know, Doug, you're not in there and they're playing some poker. You can't analyze hands from 2000 and whatever. Like, this is poker. You can't analyze old poker. It's still poker. It's like, dude, you can absolutely analyze poker. And we're going to always do that because here's the great thing. Strategies might change and they might evolve. But at the end of the day, poker is still poker. And just because it happened a while ago doesn't mean the strategies are or aren't correct. There's still a correct way to play poker, and we're going to analyze it in that way. Now, that might mean that they don't know about this, or people didn't know in general, or like it was you know, more of the Wild West. But that doesn't mean there isn't a correct strategy, and we're always going to take that approach here in poker hands. Anyway, let's move on into the turn. Phil Ruffin shows no respect. Well, Viffer's plan seems to have backfired. But he's not willing to jump ship yet. 50,000, he's going to put Ruffin to the test. What you got? Tough call for Ruffin. Call. Guess not. So the turn is the Four of Hearts, which is apparently an action card. Ruffin decides to continue his story here with a $20,000 bet into a $19,000 pot. If I had to pick out the worst hand to be doing this with, I think I would pick a king. Because there's really no opportunity to get value from hands like an 8, or jacks, or draws, like weak draws that flowed the flop. And instead, you're going to get action from all better kings... And then, of course, as well, all aces. So this is a definite spot to not lead and also not bet with this hand. If you wanted to have a lead here, which I can't really get behind, but you know what? Let's just di we'll just like dive right in and pretend we're going to. You should use a lot of the kinds of hands that we talked about Viffer having to raise the flop. You should use some hands like Jack-10 or Queen-Jack or Queen-10. Maybe a hand like Hearts that bet the flop that now wants to lead the turn. And I guess I would maybe even like betting an eight more i still would bet an eight but at least with an eight you might get him to fold like a weak king or a hand like jacks or you know maybe even a better eight but this hand makes straight up no sense to lead with and i'm sure at this point you know in in, in the game the players realize that ruffin's essentially just clicking buttons but it's a dangerous game because at this point you really don't know what you can get him on or off i mean 
Just the fact that Ruffin seems to think he's value betting here with the king, I guess, I really don't know. It seems like he thinks he's value betting. Kind of says a lot about the way he's going to be playing a lot of hands post-flop. And what it also really says to me is like, dude, is this the guy you want to isolate with 9-2 suited in the cutoff? The guy who flops second pair and is just potting it? Probably not. Probably a good reason to play even more close to the vest pre-flop. But anyway, Ruffin comes in with a 20k bet and now Pete has a decision. And this is really, this is really just the best part of the hand. I mean, I guess there's a lot that's great about this hand, but this turn raise is just phenomenal. So, so if ever has a hand so bad there's no way it can call, he has a hand so bad pre-flop there's no way it can raise. A hand so bad on the flop there's no way it can call. And just absolutely the worst possible hand you can have here on the turn facing an over the pot bet. And I, I can't help but feel, guys, I can't help but feel like maybe there were some live reads going on. I, I don't know. I'm, I wasn't there. I don't really know. And, and maybe, maybe he had a read on something that happened or he did or the way he did something before. I don't know. But I would maybe use this hand as an example of not going with your reads. You know, play a good strategy. Maybe bluff a little more. Maybe throw in the 7-6 here. Or maybe throw in the jack-10 or the queen-10 or the hearts. But come on, man. You have nine high against a player who's betting over the pot. You know, lay it down. I mean, I guess at least he raised. But why would you raise the 50k here? I don't understand. Pick any other hand. I'm so tilted by this raise. Anyway, now back to Ruffin. Man, this is why you don't bet king three. I just, I, I, this hand's making me so angry. This is why you don't bet king three, okay? Because now what do you do, right? He's now saying he has a much stronger hand, a hand like four four, a hand like ace four, a hand like a trapped ace king, aces or kings on the flop. And now he's raising the turn representing strength with those holdings. Now, I guess he's not really thinking about it in that way. Maybe he just thinks a king is very strong here. And so he thinks that he's definitely good a lot. Hard to say. But betting with middling hands, particularly leading, betting in general, is not a very strong play because when you get raised, you don't know what to do. Now, on low boards, it might be a better play, like betting a three on uh, king three two. That's a much better play because you fold out hands like queen jack that have a lot of equity against you. But on ace high boards, and specifically ace king high boards, betting a king is not a recommended play and has a not very high EV compared to the check. In a lot of spots. Maybe there's some spots that's not true, but at least in this spot for sure. So, at this point, Ruffin decides to call, and we're playing some goddamn poker on the river. Let's see what the river is. Queen of hearts. Three hearts on board. Two. So, what's the right combination to open the safe? 30 to the right. 18 to the left. Or a hundred thousand in the middle. Let's see, let's see. 50. Does the rubber band play? Does the silly band play? Yeah. How There's much you have there? I want to say he can't call <laughs> this, but he's proven me wrong before. That'd be a good deal for you. Call. And there he goes. You got it. The river is the queen of hearts, which all things considered is actually a pretty interesting river. Jack-10 gets there, backdoor hearts get there, and now there's a lot less hands that can be bluffing. So Ruffin decides to check, and Pete decides to bet $100,000. Now, I guess of any street, if I had to say there was one street I, street I liked the most, it would be this one. Because now, a lot of the other hands that are bluffing... They all got there. However, I would still probably say I'm not a big fan of this. I don't see a reason to not use a hand like Queen Jack or Queen 10, even though you paired up because now you block him from having two pair. Additionally, you want to be bluffing here with a hand that has a heart in it because then your opponent is less likely to have a rivered flush. So even though I think this is probably the best played street from Viffer, I still don't like the decision and think he should try to use a hand more like I guess 7-6 suited, or maybe 7-6 with a heart, or queen-jack or queen-10 that block the value range of his opponent. So this bet, uh, or this bet of $100,000, or as I like to call it, 120 big blinds here, 125 big blinds on the river, now goes back over to Ruffin. And what's he going to do with a king? 
If I have a king here, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have some aces here. Because I'm going to have a lead range. I'm going to put some aces in. I'm going to have some two pairs. Have a few flushes. I would have a king with a flush. And I think all things considered, I have a pretty easy fold. I mean, hell, having the three in his hand actually blocks, apparently, some of the bluffs his opponent can have. So in this spot, you want to think about what are all of my hands and what ones do I want to call and fold. So the bet's about 100,000. The pot's about 120 before the bet. So that means you want to call about 50, 55% of all of your hands. This means he can fold hands like a king and call hands like an ace or better and still be totally okay. Now, I'm sure he's not using this logic on the river, but that doesn't mean it's not the way he should be looking at it. You want to make sure to pick calls that are stronger up in your range and also can block some of the value bets. Like, for example, let's say he had a hand that was like king nine with the nine of hearts. That would be a better call because now your opponent is less likely to have a flush. So, I'd probably fold my kings here, probably call my aces, probably try and call with hands that have a heart in them, and let go of my shitty second pair on a board where basically all of the bluffs have got there. Or at least, I guess, have paired. So this call is pretty sick, and definitely owned Viffer. So I guess well played, and maybe they were both on that level, or maybe Pete was on that level, and Ruffin just... You know, the great thing about when you start playing Rock, Paper, Scissors, and Poker, guys, at the end of the day... No matter how much you like try to outsmart your opponent, if you throw rock and, and they throw paper, you're going to lose, right? And that's kind of why you want to use a good balanced poker strategy. I see a lot of the comments are like, don't bluff fish, can't bluff this guy. And okay, that might be true in this exact spot. But you don't know that that means that you can't bluff it off in other places. I think even when players show that they're stations, you want to find the right bluffs. Find hands that make a lot of sense as bluffs and work those in. Because just because this bluff didn't work doesn't mean it's not a bad spot to bluff. Although, you know, clearly now that we see this hand, we know that. But, but the most important thing to take away here is finding the right hands to bluff. Bluffing is a, a part of poker. It's a, frankly probably my favorite part of the game. And not bluffing because someone is X kind of player isn't really a smart way of going. Maybe you want to bluff less. Maybe you want to pick your spots more carefully. Maybe you want to make sure you have the right hand. But don't be like, oh, you can't bluff this guy, so I'm never going to bluff. Because you don't know if maybe in some other situations, he might underplay the strength of his hand. Maybe here he thinks a king is very strong. Maybe on a board with a straight on it, you know, he thinks two pair is very weak. It's, it's hard to say. We don't, really know, we don't really know what these players are like in all the situations. So don't make big adjustments. Don't, make, don't go with your reads. Try to play good poker and then make a few small adjustments about, based off the things that you see. Raise a little wider, wider, bluff a little bit more. But don't just go absolutely apeshit with some hand because you think you can get your opponent to fold. Thank you for joining me here for Poker Hands. Good to get another one of these episodes out. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for being here. Remember guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I also want to say thank you to everyone because we just hit 10k subs, means a lot to me, glad to see the channel is growing. If you want more content like this, hit that button, show me some love. If Duan does have a hand like Kings, Queens, Tens, or Ace Jack himself, it's going to be very hard for Duan to get away from a river that completes the flush. So his call in the turn here, while he might not have direct odds against a lot of the strong hands, Duan occasionally giving up, him getting value.